What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is March 22nd of 2018. Well folks, it's time for a daily update here on the Datadash channel. Today we have a few key things to dive into for the update. First and foremost, as always though guys, we're going to take some time to look at market valuations as well as doing some technical analysis on the market leaders. But outside of this as well, we really have two key headlines to dive into. One in regards to technical analysis, discussing the inevitable death cross that many people see in Bitcoin. So I know there's many of you out there who might not know what a death cross is. We'll talk about what it is during the video as well as its opposite, the golden cross, just for a little bit of TA information and a lot of that as well i'll be sharing my opinion on whether or not this is an actual concern for bitcoin or we're even going to have a death cross and last but not least, in regards to a lot of unjustified FUD, there's been a lot of talks that financial regulators in Japan are cracking down on Binance. And not only did CZ come out with a swift res uh, response, one of the founders of Binance, but we'll see that a lot of this is unjustified FUD in the long term. So without further ado, we've got a lot to talk about, guys. Let's go ahead and dive into the daily update and not wait off any longer. So first and foremost, kind of talking about the tone of market, guys. We've been having a few green days in the market, many days where cryptocurrencies have had double digit rebounds in the altcoin space as well as the market leaders in the top 10. So as we can see, we do have some coins in the green, but most are generally in the red. Some are beating up Bitcoin. However, the general trend is that we're seeing a down day in the market. So if we come down here to global market capitalization here, we can obviously see we're turning over just a tad bit over the past few days. We've lost about, I think, a general amount if we're at $353 billion in the peak. We've lost uh, around a little bit less than $30 billion, around $25 billion in valuation from the peak of the previous run up over the past few days. So we're not really cutting off too much in the market. I mean, it's crypto guys, you're gonna have to see days where things go up 20%, things go down five or 10%. It's pretty standard. But that being said, it is important to see where that valuation is shifting out of. So if we go here to take a look here at Bitcoin, we can obviously see some of the altcoins are correcting. We had a lot of big leaps over the past few days and Bitcoin is tracking up a little bit higher. Nothing too serious, but at the same time, uh, we are seeing a little bit of dominance come back into Bitcoin. Now, if we do revisit 45%, that's gonna be something interesting to watch. That might mean that we've got some more downside in this market. We might have more altcoins uh, flushing out valuation. Again, there's a lot of altcoins that still are at pretty high levels. I would refer probably to a lot of players like Ripple, Ethereum, um, uh, lumens everything like that a lot of the kind of like uh, cross payment solutions as well as some of the uh, kind of larger players in the space have still yet to correct monero is another example so because of this we might have more rather than the other coins decreasing we might have a lot of coins that were originally in the top five or top ten of cryptocurrencies continuing to decrease so that's the general trend I'm looking at, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about what's on everyone's mind right now. And it's kind of happen, happening live right now in regards to the rejection at this key indicator. Well, it really happened a few hours ago, but basically speaking, we saw a rejection at the 200 day. Now, this is something I'm concerned about more than what I think a lot of other people are talking about and getting concerned about, which is the inevitable death cross. So we can already see that there's headlines talking about this. Bitcoin above $9,000, but the death cross still serves as a risk. So... For those of you out there who don't know what a death cross is, there's really two different types of crosses when we're talking about this technical indicator. There's a golden cross, which is good news, and there's a death cross, which is bad news in regards to technical analysis, supposedly. So when we talk about a gold cross, a gold cross is when you have the 50-day moving average crossing through the 200-day, signaling positivity in the sense of momentum, signaling that you're, the market's looking for higher levels of upside and that we're continuing the trend to a higher level rather than a lower one. So that's a good technical indicator. This means that prices would go up. But in this case, we're looking at what's known as a death cross. And in simple put terms, it's the opposite of a golden cross. It's the 50-day, this green line right here, crossing down below the 200 day. So again, we're looking at these moving averages on the daily time frame when we're talking about the golden and golden and uh, death cross. And in this case, we're getting very close to what could potentially be a death cross. It could be maybe a final nail on the coffin to knock Bitcoin down to 6,000 again, to find a base around there. And then eventually, if we have a catalyst at that time, serve as a way to bring in liquidity to the market. And maybe, you know, for example, like the Bitcoin ETF and stuff. Now, here's the thing. 
I'll be honest, I was thinking that we would have some resilience to get above the uh, 200 day and possibly test the death cross, but obviously we've seen some rejection there. Uh, the volume isn't really steady and a lot of this might have been caused about what we're uh, caused by what we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes in regards to Binance. But because of that, I have to stick to the charts, guys, as much as I think we are still on the lower end and we can still get a little bit more greedy in this market. Have to be fair, we did see a rejection here where I thought we would get above there. So we might see some lower prices for Bitcoin. Again, these markets, guys, are kind of moving sideways right now. We have to wait for a, a serious catalyst to get Bitcoin going to all-time highs. But it doesn't mean that there isn't opportunities in the altcoin space. And we'll take a look at that as we go through. And again, if you guys want to read through this, uh, I'll leave the Coindesk link down below. Coindesk has uh, put out a pretty decent article on the topic of the death cross. But they have also some good charts in there as well that you can look at. But as of for now, uh, until we find a good bottom on the hourly and to see if we can get above, the hourly uh, hold here, basically, this is what I want to see, hold on the 200 hour moving average. If we can do that and start to form a base and curve back up, I'm not going to see too much worry on this. And I, I think it could be a lot of fun, but we're going to need to have some upside momentum to keep the 50 day from crossing below the 200 day, even though the 200 day is flattening out right now. We need to have the price action move higher. All right, so let's go ahead here and talk about some of these altcoins, guys. So again, Ethereum is playing the same case here. Closing below the 200 day, it's obviously looking like we're going to have a breakdown to one of these lower levels down here. I'm remaining patient on it. I think Ethereum will provide a good buying opportunity, possibly down at one of those lower levels, but it's not there yet, in my opinion. Again, I was talking about earlier, there's some players in this market that are in the top 10 who, uh, oops, sorry, I'm sleep. <laughs> XRP. Um, there's a lot of players in this market that still need to correct. They still need to have a lower level of price action. And because of that, I'm waiting patiently. I'm not buying any of the top 10s right now because many of them are overvalued. Now, actually, there's a few players that aren't exactly as overvalued, but you still have a lot of players like um, XMR, BTC, Monero. Sorry, I'm having a I'm having trouble with my keyboard today, guys. <laughs> I'll actually get it on Bitrix here so we can get some more price action. But as you can take a look here, I mean, we're still on the higher range of things. I have my, uh, I think I removed my drawings or maybe I'm on the wrong exchange here. But again, we're trading on the higher end of Monero, guys. We, we have to wait till we see a general decrease in Monero before we start taking any serious buy positions. Some of these are still holding at very high levels for these cryptocurrencies. The only one that I can see that's cheap right now is Dash. Uh, in regards to the kind of uh, top 10 of cryptocurrencies. We can see Dash has not only come out of the falling channel here, but it's also come uh, very close to this lower end of support around four, uh, 4 million Satoshis. So I'd keep an eye to see if we get a correction down to that level and if we can possibly get a buy opportunity there. If this starts to curve up though, I would definitely keep an eye on Dash as a safe security play until we possibly see the end of correction on, on Bitcoin and other altcoins in the space. So watching dash on that however going back in through the top market leaders like we were looking at before bitcoin cash again holding below the wedge still not doing anything right now there's just not any catalyst to make this go up or down a lot of that as well litecoin uh still holding below that 50 day again this is a perfect example guys i hate to say it there hasn't been a catalyst for me to believe that Litecoin can start moving to higher Bitcoin comparative highs. And because of that, I think we're going to probably come down to at least the 200 day, at least. Um, you have a big range between where we've come from December and where we are now. And because of that, I think Litecoin, just like many other players in the market, is still on the higher end of things. That's just what I'm seeing from a trader's perspective. I take an account of probability here from previous price history. So that's what you can do a lot of times with Bitcoin comparatives. Uh, now, we have seen some resilience from these players, uh, for example, like Cardano, which had uh, had a nice rebound the other day, as well as gained a teeny bit of volume, nothing serious. We don't have any serious institutional buying or whales diving in to buy uh, ADA at these prices. And because of that, I'm not too eager to, to say that this is the end of the sell. If we, again, could possibly see this roll back over if Bitcoin continues lower down, uh, and we could see it come down to 1,350 uh, uh, 1, Satoshis. But as of now, not too worried about it right now. I think this is still in a fundamental sense on the lower end of things. So I, I don't, I wouldn't mind adding to these positions down here, but I'm not urgent to add any more from what I already have. Now we have Icon here, for example, as well, who again responded very positively to the news that BitThumb was going to be listing uh, Icon onto the exchange. And this is good news for Icon. And I think again, like I was saying, uh, much like we've had, uh, we continue to have a green day after I covered it on the channel, along with a second day of price action, which is now faded down a little bit. 
it's important not to underestimate that this listing is going to be big news for Icon. Just saying that we've had not only a descending wedge, guys, and technically speaking, it's good. Along with that as well, we've had the buy a bit thumb listing, and I think that you're going to have more and more positive news when we get the full altcoin cycle to the upside for Icon. So. Again, with Bitcoin being low, guys, a lot of these altcoins are much cheaper than they've been in not only in a long time since back in uh, December and November, but we're starting to see for a case, in this case of Icon, ever since it got listed on Binance here, when you account for the USD valuation, it's actually lower than where it was back here in December because of the Bitcoin correction. So you have a lot of cheap altcoins in this market that are fundamentally low. But it depends whether or not, I think, honestly, if you guys were to consider getting a position, if you think this is the bottom on Icon, I would wait until this possibly comes down to find a spot of support, a spot of a, correct, um, a little bit of correction, but also a spot of support on one of these moving averages, whether that be the 200 hour or the 100 hour, I don't know. You have to decide that for yourself, guys. But I'm not looking to add any to, ser to any serious positions because right now it's gone parabolically to the upside. Not to mention, I've already built my long term swing trade position, and that's really all I want, or more of a long term position, really, an icon. So, going through here, I'll take a look at a few more because I've gotten some requests in the community, and you guys know I like to hear uh, what you guys want to see on the channel and do as much as I can. Uh, many of you have noticed that EOS did break out of the wedge we were talking about yesterday. We continued to the upside. We had some serious buy side action on EOS come in out of nowhere on the hourly. And with that as well, we've had a little bit of a rollover and correction here. Now, I want to see this base out before I, I, I buy any serious position on this, guys. Keep in mind, this has had a nice jump to the upside. I'd like this to cool off for a while, find some support somewhere, whether it be here at uh, 665,000 Satoshis, which I think would be the best level for it. If that's the case, I definitely will consider looking at EOS for a position, but I want this to hold for a few days at a much more reasonable price rather than where it is now. And then along with that as well, NEO. Many people thought I'm abandoning NEO or I don't talk about NEO. I saw, I think on our Facebook group, someone was talking about it. The whole thing here with NEO is that I want to see this base out on the 200 day. This was a pretty dramatic rebound off of it, but it looks like it's rolling back over. So we'll see if it can hold on here. Again, guys, previous price history shows that it can break below the 200 day. I at least want to see it hold support before I even consider making a trade on it. Okay, so that's enough rambling on the technical analysis and price action of things, guys. Price levels are looking Mas o menos in regards to the fact that Bitcoin is still tumbling down uh, below the 200 day. And because of that, we, we don't have any consistent trend right now. So let's go ahead and talk about this fundamental FUD in the markets, guys. As many of you might have heard, there was supposed talks that um, the FSA, or I think that's, yeah, that's the Financial Service Agency of Japan, uh, from a report from Nikkei, came out and stated that supposedly they were setting in new orders for Binance and other Japanese exchanges to seize operations or seize uh, operating services to customers. And this is basically, in, in very layman speak, they were basically telling them to shut down operations uh, for trading and for people investing in cryptocurrencies. Uh, and this is a pretty serious worry to people because the FSA has pretty high financial authority in Japan in the systems of, uh, systems of governance there. And because of that, there were mass withdrawals from Binance. There were a lot of people pulling up funds thinking that they were you know, gonna get shut down and get their, their cryptocurrency seized. Well, obviously, one, that hasn't happened. And second off, this has been direct FUD from one of the big Japanese, um, again, Japanese uh, news outlets, Nikkei. Nikkei is very heavily tied to the financial sector, and they've previously written articles as well. You can go through and read some of the things that they uh, write. They've also done previous uh, exchanges in Japan in regards to crypto and blockchain getting cracked down by the FSA. But we can come here to a tweet by CZ that shows, again, Binance, out of all exchanges out there, is not only being run properly, they're keeping 100% transparency with the community. And I love this. So let's go ahead and read to this. Nikkei showed irresponsible journalism. We are in constructive dialogues with Japan's FSA and have not received any mandates. It does not make sense for the Japan Financial Service Association or uh, fi Financial Services Association to tell a newspaper before telling us while we have an active dialogue going on with them. 
Now, the real the reason this is a serious issue, guys, the reason that this is a serious issue in regards to journalism is that there is no serious mandate, which is what they dictated in the article. They were ser talking about serious action happening from the FSA in Japan for Binance, and it's just not true. This can lead towards a serious drop in price, and if we take a look back at Bitcoin, ironically enough, at the time when Bitcoin was just testing the 200 day over the past few hours, I mean, just take a look at the implementation that this had on price action. It seriously knocked it down right when we were about to test the 200 day and possibly move higher. So is this collusion in some sort, guys? I don't know. Some things are, are easy to coordinate and correlate with one another. But at the same time, I really just think this is poor journalism. It's again, yet again, how the media moves markets and how we shouldn't take every single uh, bit of headline, a bit of headlines that come out into the media as true fact. We should wait and do our research. We should wait for the real reports to come out, the real federal investigations to come in if the Japanese financial services um, agency is coming out in regards to trying to crack down on Binance. We should wait. Don't follow just the headlines, guys. Journalists get things wrong all the time. And you know what stinks? A lot of the times they don't face repercussions for it. So because of that, it's very easy to dispel fun and uh, to just kind of stir up things in the media. So outside of that, guys, I'd like to hear what you all think about this. Do you think that there's any worries in regards to Binance here? I'll be honest with you guys, in a fundamental sense, I don't see anything. It seems like CZ, as well as the rest of the Binance team, has been more than compliant with Japanese financial officials. They've been running things very professionally. They're well established now. They do billions of dollars in volume each day. And they've dealt with previous hassles and issues that they've run into. I remember, I remember recently, a lot of the fake Binance sites had collected user information and API keys and they were able to reverse all the trades back and resolve the issue. So that's some seriously positive uh, stuff coming out of Binance and it shows that they're a very mature company. But the question is, is this a worry? I really don't see it, but I'd like to hear what you guys think down in the comments down below. And along with that as well, do you guys feel that the death cross is inevitable for Bitcoin? Do you think we're going to see a death cross on the daily with how close it is right now? Or is the momentum of the 50-day going to start rebounding as we see Bitcoin test towards higher levels? Anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have anything you want me to cover on the Data Dash channel, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys want to see. However, outside of that, guys, I will see you all in the next video. Stay tuned.